Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Sharky Zartman wants to stay fit, free, and love retirement. Today, she'll tell us how to do that. Sharky, thanks for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me, Bill. Bill, before we start, Sharky, I'd like you to tell our audience a little bit about your background because it's quite unique. Well, I am a former All-American volleyball athlete and a coach and a professor at a community college. I teach health and fitness. And so my whole life has been basically about sports and education and fitness and athletics. And so that's pretty much my background. Okay, no, fair enough. And obviously something most of us haven't achieved, that status of an NCAA championship and the lifestyle you've had. But now your book is Winning at Aging. You're telling us how to win at aging. And I know you start off by saying to take charge. Do most of us just let aging happen? I think as a society, we have accepted the paradigm that it's an eventual time where we decline. And I, you know, obviously aging is a challenge. I mean, I'm not trying to diminish it at all. But a lot of the things we experience sometimes are because our bad habits catch up to us. <laughs> we can't get away with things anymore we used to. And now's the time, once we start feeling the effects of aging, to step up and do something about it. Because we can't. There's a lot more that we can control than we can't. And that's what I want to focus on. I want to give everybody a fighting chance to have the best life they can at any age. <laughs> and I think that's what we all want. And uh, we're only going going up the chart. None of us are, have found the way to actually go from 30 to 28 or from 58 to 56. So uh, we've got to follow your advice. Now, you mentioned that winning at aging is possible if we have the right perspective. Can you go into that a little more? Well, the perspective is, again, thinking about what we can control and what we can't. I remember um, John Wooden at UCLA used to tell that to his athletes before they went on the court. It goes, remember to focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. And so I think that's an empowerment type of mindset is to think about, well, what kinds of things can I control and then step up and do it because there's a lot that we can't control and we need to give those to our doctors or just not worry about them. So, Chucky, in going through your book, When at Aging, uh, you actually have a list of rules. And I love that because you say, like any sport, we have to know the rules. And obviously, that's only fair. Are we going to try to put the ball over the goal line, in a basket, over the outfield wall? What, what's the object? Can you tell us some of the rules of aging? Because I, I thought this was a wonderful list that you had. Oh, thanks. You should yeah. kind of think about this a little bit as we're aging, because, again, that's the direction we're going. Right, right. Well, the first thing we need to realize is that every living thing ages. Okay, like you said, none of us are going backwards. <laughs> and so that's something that is just, you know, it's life. And every part of our body is vulnerable. But the cool thing is that we can have a healthy fulfilling life at any age, but it does take work. And so we are responsible for how we handle the aging process. Doctors can only do so much. And the cool, the cool one that I think is empowering is the rate of aging is related to lifestyle, attitude, and genetics. And again, we can control two out of three. We can't control our genetics, but we can control lifestyle and attitude. And that's where we have our power. And that's, that's where we can make changes. And we need to realize that people don't get older at the same rate or have the same conditions. It's really individualized. And so I'm sure you've seen um, two people at the age of 70. One looks and acts totally different than another one. And so... Um, so it is individualized. Everybody is not going to age the same way. And so when it comes to aging, it doesn't matter who you are. It matters what you do. <laughs> and then I say respect aging, understand, and I call her a beast. She'll take away your quality of life if you don't step up. 
And how we age is up to us. Get in the driver's seat, behind the wheel, stop being a passenger or a backseat driver. Those are my rules, Bill. I love your rules, Sharky. I think, and I think for anyone who is starting to mature, let's put it that way. Uh, we don't like to admit it, but again, tomorrow we're one day older. Next week we're one week older. We have to know the rules of the game. And rather than moan and groan and try and pretend it's not happening, which is really kind of silly, let's find out the rules you're telling them and go along with it because it's a wonderful, you know, we're the winners in life. We made it to this point. Right. A lot of people would like to trade places with us. So and now you also mentioned in your book, there's perks for aging. So come on, tell us those. Oh, the perks. Okay. Well, most people don't think about the perks. So I've done some research and there is, are actually some studies that say that people over 50 tend to be happier than younger than their younger counterparts. And, um, and so I, I thought that was interesting. And as we age, we tend to live more in the present moment. We don't care about thinking about where we're going to be in 10, 15, 20 years. We want to live in the present moment. And that's good. That's called mindfulness. Um, we no longer usually care about what people think. I remember when I was younger, I had to, felt, felt like I had to dress perfectly in front of my classes. And now I really don't care. <laughs> you know? That's the one I like. I think I can be mismatched all the way through and it's perfect. I know. We, we just really don't care anymore. <laughs> and, and then one that I think is really important is we finally have the time to figure out what it is that we want to do instead of what other people want us to do. You know, when we're young, we have to think about our careers, eventually our families, and that kind of consumes us. And we forget what we want to do. And so as we get older and those things don't, aren't so taking up so much time, we can finally ask ourselves, what is it that I really want to do? What am I passionate about? Um, and that's, I think, a really great opportunity for us to finally put ourselves first and especially our health first. And so I think it's a great opportunity. And... Uh Okay. I, I know. I, I love that because, as you said, many of us, we can't um, get out of a particular job. We have two more years to retirement or five years on a pension plan or a health plan. But now, once we've reached that certain age, um, we, all those requirements are off. If we want to be a um, teacher, we can go back into teaching. We can volunteer. We all have some skill. If we want to raise flowers, if we want to be a farmer – we can use some of those skills to do something that we genuinely, um, I, I know a lady about 70 years old, I'm looking at her artwork and it's beautiful. I never knew all her life she was such a good artist and now she has more time to pursue that. So I, I agree with you 100% and I think sometimes it takes someone like you saying that just to bring it out and to make us realize, don't look at the gloom and doom or the pain we have on our foot or our hand look at the opportunities that we have and that's sitting out there for us. Right, right. And by the way, one of the things that I like that you mentioned, I think we have to emphasize to everybody, seniors do get great discounts, don't they? Yes, we do. <laughs> and I never used to ask for them, you know, because I thought, oh, that's just admitting that I'm older. And now I go, don't you have a senior discount? <laughs> oh, yes. In fact, I think there's a hat that I saw and I, I'm trying to convince people to buy it for me because I, I mean, why should I pay for it? But it says I want my senior discount. And I think people look at me when I go into Wendy's or any store and they kind of know this is the guy that's going to look for the 5, 10 or 20 percent off whatever seniors get it's very nice, and actually, we can have a little fun with that and put it aside. And if we don't want to keep it ourselves, just give it to a charity or um, some neighborhood organization. Right, right. Sharky, you <laughs> mentioned an uh, anecdote in your book about a friend, Diana, I think. Yeah. And it was early in the book, and um, just how she enjoyed life, but there was a certain problem she had. Can you tell our audience about that? Yeah. Kids. And was a second grade teacher, so very, very busy in her life. And she ended up being diagnosed with breast cancer. She fought it and thought it was gone. And then it came back for a second round, which was um, more serious in the first round. But Diana just 
did what she needed to do. She went and got her chemo on the weekends. Her hair fell out. She was sick on the weekends. But she still worked every day teaching those second graders. And she never complained about her condition. But what she did instead was she decided to make every day count and was was just, she was, I mean, just so appreciative of the time that she had left. And her and her husband traveled. And it just, she, she instead of getting depressed about her diagnosis, she decided to use it as a chance to live. And I think she got an extra year from living like that. And so, yeah, she was incredible. That's a great story. And quite honestly, in a way, she had advance notice. She knew what was coming. But most of us, and especially during these times in the pandemic, most of us really don't know you know, what tomorrow holds or if we're going to get something, you know, a, a negative um, a review or diagnosis from our doctor. So enjoy this time, get the most out of it. And whether the, when we say this time, whether that's three months, three years or 30 years, it'll probably be longer if we follow your advice. <laughs> Sharky, I'd like to let our audience know that if they're just tuning in, they're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is Sharky Zartman, Z-A-R-T-M-A-N. Her book is Win at Aging. And Sharky, I'd like to ask you and to tell our audience, do you have a website and where can we get that book? Yes, my website is my name, Sharky Zartman. Dot com, and the book is up on Amazon, also Barnes and Noble and Walmart, and so it's getting out there. It's getting out there. We're really excited. And I think for anybody, if, if this might be children listening to it, and I'm talking about adult children, you can do your parents a favor. Get that book, Win at Aging, because it's going to apply to you, too. You're going to see something in there and say, bingo, you know what, maybe this this is the time. There's no mark that says you're aging at 40, 50, 60, 70, or 80. Maybe it's 43 that you say, time to change things, turn them around. You're going to be happier, and who doesn't want that? Now, Sharky, you actually teach this. You're dealing with students in a class, and you say most of the causes of aging are controllable if we're willing to make some changes. So can you expound on that a little bit? What are some of these causes and what are the changes we're looking at? Well, for one thing, a lot of us don't, don't think about our nutrition. And I think as we get older, especially, it becomes even more important in terms of getting what our body needs to function, especially, especially at a cellular level, and thinking also what it doesn't need, which is all the toxins that are in all the processed foods. And so I think that's one, one area, and anybody of any age needs to probably clean up their diet. But especially as we get older, that's really important. And then the physical activity, I always say, <laughs> as you get older, exercise is no longer optional. You have to move every day. We need to keep our mobility. We need to keep our heart functioning. And even exercise affects the brain because it brings oxygen to the brain. And so those two things we can step up on, most of us, and work it into our lifestyle. That's really important. I remember years ago, and I read something, I think it was USA Today, it must be 20 or 25 years ago, but if we would just exercise 30 minutes a day, I think they had a study where that could reduce, I may be off by a few percentage points, but could reduce heart disease and cancer. And both the numbers were around 50%. One was 48, one was 51, I believe. But that's a tremendous number. 10% would be a great number. And they weren't asking for anything heavy duty. They said exercise can be walking half an hour a day. If you're more into it, you could do biking, swimming, go to a gym. But just walking, that's all we have to do. And for most of us, that's not really asking a lot. No, it's not. I start. I got a pedometer when our gym shut down, and I just started putting in more steps every day. And it, um, it was great. I walked down by the water, down in the marina. You can, you know, it doesn't have to be, exercise doesn't have to be something we dread. It can be something we look forward to if we're creative, especially if we get outdoors. <laughs> And one of the things I find, and you just mentioned about the pedometer, when you keep track of something, 
it's fun to know, and as you started out talking about, taking control of your life. Even if you just add 100 steps a day, if walking is hard for you, you go from 800 to 900 to 1,000, up to 1,500. You feel good because you are actually doing this. It's like lifting that weight that you started out at 100 pounds, now it's 110, 120, 150. You know you're making yourself stronger. Right, right. And that's exciting. And that's, you know, that makes you feel good. That gives you confidence. Are there any foods that you find in, in lifestyle or habits, let's not leave it limited to food, that are real negatives that you'd say, look, if you're doing this, just this is one of those simple, cut it out because it's going to lead to a problem? And- well, I'd say most snack foods, most, um, most foods that you find in a bag or a box with a label on <laughs> Someone said that. They said if it's in a bag or a box and this was a food person, that's that's the one you don't want. (laughs) That's right. Uh, When you look at the label, a lot of times you're going, is there any food in here? It doesn't look like it's mostly chemicals. And, um, you know, and those are the things you want to stay away from. When you go into the when you go into the grocery store, stay out of the aisles. Go on the outside. That's where most of the healthy foods are for you. You know, basically the fruits, the vegetables, the meats, um, you know. So, yeah, so I would just throw that whole category in there, the processed foods. I have a guy friend who's in his 50s, and he looks like he's in his 30s. And I said, how do you do it, Kevin? And he goes, I never eat anything that has a label on it. That's enough. That's enough. But it's really true, right? I mean, we laugh at it, but good for Kevin, and he's looking great and probably feeling great too. Yeah. And it's again, I'm guessing that for a lot of us, we're not going to turn down everything just because of one show. But if we can start being a little more conscious of these things, or right. maybe pick up on the exercise, if you don't want to eliminate the food, start with the exercise. If you don't want to exercise, start eliminating the food. Uh, you, you actually came up with a new disease, and I love the term of this. It's called sitting disease. Tell us what that is, as if we didn't know. <laughs> it's basically just sitting on your butt through most of the day, and I think a lot of people do that. We're so entertained by the TV or our computer that we forget. I mean, haven't you ever sat for a while, and then when you try to stand up, it's, it's hard? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Yeah, so we can't sit too long. It it actually, with some studies that I read, it actually can put you at the same amount of risk for diseases that smoking does. So sitting disease is the new smoking. And actually, I have to admit, and I'm a couch potato. I could sit and watch football or baseball or some sport for four six, eight hours, and the only break I would take would be to go to the kitchen and get one of those bags or boxes that you told me not to touch and, uh, you know, visit it a little bit because I I need some nourishment like uh, 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 potato chips or uh, Tostitos or something that's really, really good for me like that. But I challenge our audience, keep track for a week of how much sitting time you do because after I've sat for that time, I honestly look back at it and I say, did I really just sit here for five hours watching one local team win, one local team lose, and am I any better off for it? I could have been doing so much more reading, not that I shouldn't watch or enjoy it, but we could get a lot more out of life. So uh, I think sitting disease is something we should watch out for. Yeah. Now, you, you talk also about stress in your book, and you quote another book, and I just love the title, so I had to work this into the show, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. Oh, yeah. Why don't they get ulcers, and why do we care? Well, first of all, zebras and most animals, they, they you know, we, we're all equipped with what's called fight, fight or flight, and so it's a response to stress. And so a zebra, if it's being chased or if it's scared, it'll run away. It'll use that energy from the fight or flight that, sh- that it gets from adrenaline. But when it's over, they just go back to what they were doing. They're just calm, and it's like it never happened. Well, for some reason, we can't do that. <laughs> we, get it, we get stressed out. We experience fight or flight. And when it's over, we just keep reliving it. A lot of times we'll intensify it in our minds. And so it's, um, yeah, 
we, these are things that we don't have to do. If we lived more in the present moment and didn't just reach into the past, uh, we would be so much happier. So. And not only that, but I think that's a great way to meet people that if they say you look good or, gee, you, you look healthy, well, I practice what zebras practice. Well, that leads right to a conversation. And it's a great um, door opener for people on a short statement. It's obviously very true because I found a lot of friends now are telling me they stay away from reading or listening about the news. It only gets them annoyed or upset. And it's like they can't change it. So why should they, you know, they, they want to know things to be informed, but right. they don't spend all day on the computer looking at news briefs, etc. because it just gets them angry. It causes them stress and they want want to be a zebra. So I think that's a good, uh, a good ideal in life for us to go for. Yeah. Chucky, again, at this point in the show, I want to remind our listeners, you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. I'm Bill Horan. Our guest today is Sharky Zartman, Z-A-R-T-M-A-N. Her book is Win at Aging. Sharky, can you tell us where we can get the book and the website? Yes. My website is my name, sharkyzartman.com, and the book is up on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart, and so it's out there, and we want to make sure that it's available for anybody who wants to win at aging. <laughs> and I think that's all of us, so uh, anybody who wants to win, if, if now you're admitting it, uh, take a little time and read this book. Even if you pick up two or three things out of it, can make a vast difference in your life. Sharky, you had a story in the book. There was a gentleman who had, I think it was stage four cancer. And he went to the local medical facility and they were doing a study. And he actually became, I guess, a little obnoxious with him. He said, I want to be part of it. They really didn't want him, but uh, he was so persistent, they allowed him to join it. And I'd like it if you recall it. I don't know if you remember that story. It was a double blind study and uh, they allowed him to take part in it. Can you tell us uh, how that worked out? Well, I'm sure you've heard of the placebo effect. And I always tell the story of my health class because I want them to understand how powerful the mind is. And this is an actual true story that I learned when I was a student at UCLA. And what happened was, yes, he did sign up. He tried to sign up at first. They didn't want him because he was stage four. And they said, sorry, you know, we can't take you. And then he said, please take me. And he called them every single day and just, you know, wouldn't let them. Finally, they brought him in. But a double blind study is there's two groups. They both think they're taking the medication. One group is taking the medication. The other group is not, but it's all labeled the same. So which group do you think they put him in, Bill? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not even going to guess. You tell us. Okay. The group that was not taking the medication, but he didn't know. He thought he was. And guess what happened? Some good things, I know, because I've read your book. (laughs) Okay, okay, he got better. He went into remission, and the people in the study just went, "Well, he's he's not even taking the medication. How is he doing that?" It was the power of his mind that um, actually, you know, turned the cancer around for him. And I think now I'm not saying that everybody can do that, but it's an example as to how strong a positive, driven mind can be. And I think that's great, and that's that's what I wanted to bring out, and and I'm I'm glad you had that story. Um, Here's a gentleman who, who, stage four cancer, he shouldn't have even been in this study. They didn't even want him. He persisted and took control of it, and as you said early in the book, take control of your life. He did that, and even if it's just that's the reason, his own mind convinced him he had a 50-50 chance of now curing the cancer. That's not accurate, really, but at least he believed that. And by believing it, he was cured. And I don't think we care what the reason is, whether it's uh, the work of a doctor, if it's a um, witch doctor, or if it's eating old grass, we'll do it if it's going to cure something. And it worked for him. Yes. Sharky, you also mentioned that uh, you, and in fact, that that's, it's a good segue from what we just talked about. So many people put their lives in the hands of others. And I guess mainly that's a doctor because we go to a doctor and we say, you know, what should I do, etc. Can you talk about that? And why is that not good? Why is that? Why do you consider that dangerous? I 
I believe that we all need to have good medical doctors that can help us when we get sick or when we get a condition. And so I'm not saying that doctors are not valuable. They are. I'm just saying that they can't do everything. And I think a lot of times people just turn over their health to their doctors. Well, our doctors are not responsible for our lifestyles. And so whatever we do at home is, you know, the doctor's not controlling. And our behaviors in terms of how we eat, whether or not we exercise, who we hang out with, how much sleep we get, all those things are under our control. And so, and doctors want you to do those things. And, and also, they can't spend that much time with you. Look how busy these doctors are. They only get like sometimes five, ten minutes to spend with you in a visit. And so, we, we really do need to step up and take care of what we can take care of. Our wellness is our responsibility. Doctors will try to cure our diseases, get, it, get us back to where we were before we got sick. That's their job. Their job is not to <laughs> slow down the aging process. <laughs> that's, that's up to us. And I guess even more so today, because now we walk into a doctor's office, it's not the family doctor who knew you, your mother, your brother, your sister, and your son and daughter. This is a doctor who is there. They're meeting you for the first time. They don't know your history, and they're allowed to spend two and a half minutes with you. So they're doing the best they can, but under the system that they're working under. Um, and I think it's good that you alert us to that. They mean well. It's not that they're bad people. They're doing, you know, excellent jobs. But we do have to kind of add in our own common sense a little bit and watch out for this because, again, it's our life. Sharky, before we wrap up, give us one more tip that you would say you want everyone to follow. It's, it's kind of one of those easy tips that will get us started in the right direction. I really believe that now is the time to put your health and your life as your priority. It's, 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 it's important that we also realize that aging is a challenge, but it's also an opportunity and a privilege. I mean, we are the lucky ones. We get to, we have the gift of time. And we need to use it. And if someone wants some good tips, tell us where and we can get the book Win at Aging and the website. Again, my website is sharkiesartman.com. The book's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. We can't ask for much better than that. Here's a person who's gone through life, who knows it. She's an NCAA top athlete and actually teaches this in college. So we can't ask for much better advice than that. Try the book When at Aging and be a winner. Uh, if you're a winner, you're lasting longer on earth, and I think that's what we all want. Sharky, we want to thank you for being with us today and appreciate your time. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. I'd like to let our audience know that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Please join us again next week at the same time when we'll continue our journey to success. 